This, folks, is the Skoda Kodiak, and it's fallen into a segment that's so important at the moment, the family SUV segment, especially ones that allows for that seven seat capability, and inside we have that. We have seven seats in this version here. Of course, it is available with five seats. You spend an extra thousand euro or so more, and boom, you got the seven seats. Let's have a gander at this new Kodiak. Not Skodiak, Kodiak. So Skoda are kind of what I'd call a generous bag, uh, manufacturer of cars, right? If you look at the Fabia, it's got a huge boot. If you look at Superb, it's absolutely massive. If you go for the Superb Combi or the Estate version, 660 litres of space, it's loads. Now, I don't have the literage of this, but I can show you that with seats six and seven down, it is, it's vast. It's, ow, I hit my head. Okay, it's pretty big. These are on rails. They can be pushed forward a little bit more. Underneath me here are seats uh, six and seven. Let's go through some things that are in here, right? Okay, that's your parcel shelf, folks. Hangers here for you. You can throw your shopping bags onto them if you want. You've got this release. If I flick on that, it's gonna push that down. Likewise, on the other side, same thing. We've got a 12 volt charger over here. We have a magnetic torch that I've just thrown there. It's the magnetic torch, okay? We've seen this before in Skoda Superb. Okay, so what this is, is a tow bar release. Now, Tim, if you wanna go back there, I'm gonna pull this lever here. Keep an eye down here at the bottom of the car over on this side, and you're gonna see this bad boy popping out. The towage on this is about 2,500 kilos or something like that. That's, that's a lot of towing. Now, this, of course, is the four-wheel drive version as well, which means, you know, it'll take a little bit more. Um, two, two and a half thousand kilo. That, as far as I'm aware, is correct. So do you ever do your shopping in Lidl, Aldi, Tesco's, Dunn's, wherever it is you do your shopping, right? And you have a sultry bag that's full of, let's say, fruit and veg, and they're all loose and everything else like that. Now, quite often it's happened to me where I'd come home and the shopping would be all over the back seat, it'd be everywhere. These little clever bits of Velcro and plastic can hold your bag in place. Great for the shopping. You would have seen before, I was given out in my Peugeot 3 Tower, Peugeot 5008 review, and the link will be up in one of the corners here. Right, in that review, I was given out about lack of headroom, okay, because of the panoramic sunroof. Because it, there's usually a casing just underneath the roof itself. Now, that is not a problem in here. I still have another at least inch to spare up there, even with that. So that's absolutely fine. That's actually quite nice. We have Alcantara going on in here in the black. Nice stitching as well along the, um, the black seating here too. Of course, we have the center armrest, cup holders and things going on there. That's great. Okay, and over here we have, unfortunately, no USBs. We do have a 12-volt charger just there. There's another one in the back as well. Now, it'd be nice to have USB charger points there because on the back of these seats and this was an optional extra with this car you have the tablet holders or phone holders or whatever you want to call them I don't know I'm not up with the kids with all this kind of new gadgetry I'm not joking I love this stuff it's absolutely cool now I'm a huge Skoda Superb fan once again up in the corners here if you've subscribed to our channel before and if you haven't you should subscribe now uh, you'll notice we've done two Skoda Superb reviews at least uh, one of them with the commie one of them with the normal saloon and one of the things we go on about is the vast amount of legroom now this seat is in my normal driving position and the legroom is absolutely fantastic i have inches of space here for my knees i can put out my legs and it's extremely comfortable i hope there's no builder's arse going on here Whoop, here we go in we go okay that's very tight at the moment now these are back to the full distance back in terms of this row remember i only pushed this rail here forward focus only on what you're about to see here but if i was sitting in the back of this it's not too bad it means whoever's in front they are going to suffer in terms of leg room a small bit two people in here with these seats forward wouldn't be terrible i'm actually quite surprised it's my first time sitting back here of course a lot of people giving out that there's no iso fix points here to the rear row three and there's only two here to the front one here and one here none in the center and um, so i suppose if i had to criticize say throw in a couple of iso fix but i don't think a lot of people like putting their 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 young kids into row three of a car anyway now there's another important thing to note about this car as well. The Skoda Kodiak is actually quite a nice looking car in my eyes anyway. I like these lines going along here. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, put it up against the Tiguan, I think this is a better looking car. I don't know, has Volkswagen shot themselves in the foot? A lot of people are saying that they have, and I think maybe they have. This is such a good car. But then again, maybe it's a good time for another Volkswagen brand car to be doing better, or a Volkswagen uh, led car to be doing better because of Dieselgate and everything else that's going on. Before I go on, right, the big competitors of this car are going to be the Sorento. Uh, it's going to be the Land Rover Discovery Sport. 
Uh, I'm even going to say the Peugeot 5008. And folks, if you've subscribed to the channel, or if you haven't, now's a good time to do it. You'll see a link for the Peugeot 5008 review up here somewhere, which hasn't landed on our shores as of yet. Not including 3008, 5008, and this Skoda uh, Kodiak, the big bear that it is, are my two favorite kind of family SUVs at the moment. I think they're absolutely spectacular. Seven seaters like this one I'm talking about. I really do think they're spectacular. Very different though. This is a very masculine looking machine. Whereas I'd look at the Peugeot 5008 and say it's, it's kind of more fashionable if you want or possibly more feminine. I, I, I'm not sure what terminology I should use for that. But to drive, okay, so we've got this 190 brake horsepower, two liter TDI engine going on here. We've got a seven speed DSG box. Let's go with the DSG box first, okay? So I'm at slow speeds now. I find it's kind of slow to change gears. Uh, when you put the foot down with a bit of gusto, I definitely find it slow to change gears. When you're cruising though, you're not gonna notice it. And if you're not driving with gusto, you won't notice it either. The engine, the 190 brake horsepower engine is very good and this is a four wheel drive machine so it does have plenty of power and you know you, you don't feel at any stage that you're being sluggish now there's also a 150 brake horsepower TDI engine available as well as I think there's a 1.4 TSI engine too 125 and 150 brake I think the 125 brake 1.4 TSI is the entry level right and this is the big news about the Skoda Kodiak you can get all this fantastic looking machine without some of the options like the screen wouldn't be as nice as it is in this for 28,795 quid. That is spectacular. And that's with that 1.4 TSI 125 brake horsepower engine. This one here we're sitting in is like 44,150, extra thousand for the two extra seats in the back. One thing I will point out is a bit of road noise coming in from that. And as well as that, we're wearing 19 inch uh, tires here. So you're picking up a lot of noise road or road noise with that. Uh, entry level, I think is gonna give you 17 inch tires. I, that'll possibly be quieter. But driving, it's what surprises me. Okay, so you got this good engine that's powerful. It's able to get you from A to B, no problems whatsoever. But you'd expect something like this to really roll on corners. And it does roll, but it's not bad at all. Like, I mean, when you consider this, this is as big as your Sorento. When you consider that, you'd expect just a little bit more roll on those corners. It's actually quite refined. I have to say all in, I am extremely impressed by the Skoda Kodiak and it is actually one of the few SUVs that I'd happily live with and now in fairness I can name three that I'd happily purchase at the moment. I'd go for that Kia Sorento and um, I think uh, seats six and seven in that are absolutely brilliant. I'd go for this Skoda Kodiak, that's just such good value for money. And then that Peugeot 5008 which is yet to land here. Now of course you're going to see all the reviews in the end screen of this. But all in, yeah, I have to say that it's a really, really good car. It's worth all the hype that they're getting. Skoda are a really good brand, and this adds to it. Right, folks, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, okay, you're going to see a subscribe button. I think it's over here. Tim, is that the right corner? Yeah. I think it is. Right, so that's the corner there. And please follow the links around the screen as well. And other than that, folks, we'll see you again very soon.